How good's this? And this is a perfect example of why this day is one worth celebrating. I'm a kid that didn't do very well at school, but I've been lucky enough to have one of the best jobs in the world and certainly the best job I'll ever have, which is to host this show and to be at your place each and every night. So how do you make Australia Day that even more special? Well, you get the chance to talk to the Deputy Prime Minister. Special enough. But imagine if you got the chance to do it at his house. Seriously, that's what we did. A conversation with Barnaby Joyce on his front porch. We started off by his controversial comments that you don't have to live in Sydney. It's a modern world. You can live in different areas and you can have a great standard of living. And so I'm going to... I'm going to keep pushing the message, I know they've all got the shits with me, that you, you can live in other parts of Australia, you really can, and uh, I've got a lot of mates who moved out of Sydney, come up here. When I ask them, would you move back, they go, uh, no. Yeah. So what, do you, what, if anything, can a government do to say, a big business to say, come sure. and move to Tamworth, sure, sure. become the insert well, hub of... Yeah, well, I'm trying to do that in a small way myself, Paul, and I'm getting absolutely hammered for it. You know, <laughs> moving APVMA out of Canberra, you know, to Armidale. Oh, how could you? Oh, how cruel. How? You've how, sent them to the third how world. Cruel. It's the how Siberia. Cruel. Right. <laughs> through the town with all those cathedrals and universities. It's <laughs> disgusting. And I, mean, I mean, how can a man survive without 15 cha uh, Japanese restaurants? <laughs> Correct. How do you get through? How do you get through the weekend? You know? And so, um, so <laughs> you, know, you just so that's part of it. Big companies, you know, they, they, they can set sections of their companies up here, uh, the call centres out in the regional areas. Uh, we've got a job in government, build the infrastructure, get the roads done up, get the, get the railway lines done up, get inland rail built, build dams, dams. And, uh, you know, and, and if we do that, then we give the opportunity. A price of a house here in Tamworth, about $320,000, OK? So that means mum and dad or dad or mum or whoever can actually get a job and actually know they're actually going to own their house. If you come here with a million bucks, mate, I will make you look like the Count of Monte Cristo. I mean, <laughs> I'll take you somewhere and you'll go, holy dooly. I'll say, yeah, mate. Well, That's so, yours. So there's no housing crisis. There's a, there's a Sydney crisis in certain suburbs. There is no housing crisis and Australia is a bigger place and we've got to start broadening the horizon. So we need politicians to say, yeah, there are other places you can live. We've got a, a role of government to decentralise, to move things out and to, into regional areas. There's a role of business to think, all well, right, um, we can set that section of our business up in, um, in Toowoomba, in Tamworth, in Longreach, in Wagga, uh, in Geraldton, over in Western Australia. You can do all this. And then we've got a little job for ourselves. Just change your attitude. Change your attitude and realise that, um, you know, why spend your whole life paying off a really a Packet of poo tickets, you know, on floor 23. Yeah. Get, yourself a, get yourself a nice place, get out of the country. But also, first step to this is get out of the city for a holiday. Just have a look around. If you get, because you will find a place, you'll find somewhere. That's, it's not just, if you want to do coastal towns yeah. for retirement, great. But if you're a young family that's had enough of the yeah. hour drive here, there are places like Tamworth. That's right. And, and you're dead right. You know, break the ice, go out and have an open mind and have a look around and uh, you know, come to the Country Music Festival or whatever, or just come up for, for you know, a weekend and think, how do I feel? You know, on, on a bad, as a, another mate, on a, on a really good day, it takes him 10 minutes to get to work. He said, when the traffic's really bad, shocking, it takes me 10 minutes to get to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Look, I've got to ask you about the stuff yep. that everyone yep. seems to have lost their head about today. Yep. Good, God forbid that you believe Australia Day should be on the 26th of January. Apparently this is a controversial thing to say. This is nothing. These people drive me inside out. You know, and I know they're down protesting and they're, they want to, you know, they're on the internet and they want to kill me. That's fine. Whatever. But, you know, this is the thing. I love this country, right? We've got a democracy. Uh, it's egalitarian. I walk down the street. I don't need a coterie of bodyguards. I've got free education. If I get crook, I go up to the hospital. I don't have to pay. It's a beautiful country and it's the rule of law. Everything's right about it. And I'm, I want to celebrate that. Right? I want to celebrate how do we, how do, we do that? That was, a, that was a good trick. And, um, and other people say, oh, you know, it's a, this is shocking. We, we want to call it Invasion Day. Mate, OK. No, I didn't invade this country. And the, my first forebear, and I've been saying this today, was uh, Mary Troy. If you go to Macquarie Barracks in Sydney, you'll see a name on the, the glass wall. There it is, Mary Troy. She came out here as an orphan, 14 years old, 1849. Both her mum and her dad starved to death in a hedge in Ireland, uh, you know, with the, the, the great hunger. And um, she didn't invade the country. She, she really didn't. And I, I sort of get, really get the, 
you know, annoyed when people say invaded. I said, no, no, I wouldn't. I don't think we invaded it. And then no one, no one in my own my family invaded it. No, but also this thing too. I mean, you look at, look at the story of the, the Nisa Buzz Premier, Gladys Berejiklian, yeah. family were immigrants, couldn't yeah. speak a lick, and she's been able to make no, her she's way. she's the Premier. That's, that's the country we live God in. God bless us. That's yeah. great. It's not Hooray. the one where if you're born into this and you go to this yeah, school right. and you, you know this dot person. on your forehead or whatever. You yeah. know, no, that doesn't work like that here. You know, yeah. it's, it's, this is a great nation. And we, on Anzac Day, it's a solemnity of those who've given their life for our nation. That's, we don't say we should change Anzac Day to a more appropriate day. Say, so, no, mate, that's the day they landed on the beach. That's why it's Anzac Day. Australia Day, this is when the, this is when, when the first fleet turned up. This is it, mate. Yeah. This, this is Australia Day. And, and you just acknowledge it and say, well, the, and by reason of that, a whole culture emerged, which is not English, which is not anything else, which is ours. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and, and I'm proud of it. You know? and I'm not going to have the political correctness of the crazy lefties coming into my life once more and sort of saying, oh, well, you know, we're going to reassert this and, and, and rechange this. For who? For them. Correct. For them. Always for them. Always for them. Well, a perfect example today that we have this thing where the uh, uh, Gillian Triggs is saying that we have to change the non-existent, but yeah. still change the idea of same-sex marriage because those that don't, don't identify as male or female <laughs> are offended. Oh. Blah, 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 blah. My head's exploding. Yeah, I know. It feels like, on the outside, that all we talk about is slivers of crap and slivers yeah. stuff that's not about the main game. When you're in the middle of government... Do you get frustrated yeah, by that? Yeah, you do. What you get frust frustrated with is the juxtaposition of the absolute crap they go on with um, till you vomit, and then you walk down Pill Street or walk out to one of your country towns, and or even oh, even you walk around Sydney, except I suppose if you walk around Newtown, they probably would bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, and they um, don't talk about that. No. They, you know, they talk about things that are logical, like... Mate, when are you going to get that dam built? Uh, when can you get the bypass around Scone? Let, let's move. Let's look, let's move along. How are we going with our exports? Are we making a buck? Um, are you keeping our borders safe? You know, they. they and you think, gee, these, this is incredible. What, what, are, what, are they, what are these people? Who are these people called? Oh, they're the. Oh, they're the electors. Oh, yeah, oh that's oh, right. That, the, the, the bad group. Yeah, that's the bad shareholders. Group. That's, that's right. Group. But here's oh, the, the thing. Represent. Does that conversation, all of that sort of slivers and nonsense? I would suggest one of the reasons we talk about it all the time is because the people who ask the questions care about it. Because yeah. they're the sort of either inner city yeah, yeah, types right. or the Canberra press yeah. gallery that makes it look like politicians are talking about it all day, every yeah, day. Well, you see, wouldn't bring it up if you no, weren't asked no, about it. And, and, and you can see, I'll be quite frank, you bring them out into an environment like this and they feel incredibly awkward. You say, well, this is, your, your issue is so important. Just wander into the pub there, the Dungan pub. Convince them. Convince them. That's it. Have a yarn. Yeah. They, 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 you know, you've got to understand what is happening in so many areas. Is that, and God bless them, you get a certain group of people, well-educated, um, who go to work together, live in this big boarding school called um, Parliament House Canberra. <laughs> um, they eat together, they drink together, sometimes they sleep together, whatever. You know, yeah. they have, and good luck to them. And, and they, not in that order. And they reinforce, they reinforce the sort of primal conceits that they're carrying. And then they say, now we are going to uh, force that and sort of manifestly make that the view of the Australian people. By reason, it will be the only thing we'll talk about day in, day out. Sure. And then you get a sense of disconnect where people say, oh, man, I listen to you, but I'm just not interested in what you're saying. Yep. It's, just, it's, it's neither here nor there with me. It's yes. just, you know, you, you bang on. I'm not it. against it. I just don't care about it. I just don't care about it, it. Care about yeah. it mate. Uh, talk to me about the things that really matter in my life. You say you're going to build the inland rail. I say, like, okay, now listen, because how's that going to work? I say, oh, well, we're going to create a corridor of commerce and we're going to make people out in, in these poor areas richer and we're going to get businesses out there. Go, yeah, okay. That, Good. Have another beer. Let's do it. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's talk about that. But here's the thing. I mean, again, as, as, a, as a logical bloke, how frustrating is it in government? You're the deputy prime minister, but sometimes you can't knock the right heads together to make it happen as fast as yeah, we've got, everyone assumes it can happen. Well, you've got a whole culture. You've got to work with your, you know, your departments. You've got an ingrained culture that, that lives beyond the politician. They, like, you know, they just see politicians and a party coming and going, and then they, can, they have a sort of greater role. So you've got to get in there and muscle in there and muscle your culture into that, into that space, and, and that's really important to tell people so that they understand it. Um, you've got to get you know, people who... Uh, they, politics by itself attracts people of, uh, to the party political environment of, of strong views of a certain type. So if you go to your party meeting, there are great people and they hand out your how to vote cards, but they're not really reflective, uh, to be honest, of the general view. So they'll get, they'll get, their, they'll get the, the undies in a twist about a certain issue 
and they'll bring it up at the party meeting, and you'll think, oh, that's important, but it's, it's not really. Yeah. You know, and it's the big issues are the ones that make people stand out of living better. The big issues are the ones that give them a sense of security. People want to feel safe. They want to feel safe in their house. They want to feel, you know, they don't, they don't like people breaking into their houses, and they don't like people breaking into their country. Um, they, that they want to know that they've got a job. Basic things. They want to know that when the power bill turns up, that they've got the, they've got the, they got the money in the skyrocket to pay for it, and so they say, you know, here's a really basic thing: you get my power price down. And they can plan that it'll be yeah, basically the same in a month's yeah, time. You, basically, yeah, yeah. But if you say, oh, mate, well, look, I, I, I know I'd love to, but I've got to save. I'm going to save the planet first, and, and uh, you know, candles are not that bad. <laughs> candles are not that bad. Listen, to me, I've, I've got to say, I, I find it ridiculous watching Bill Shorten trying to play a bit of Trump on Australia first, and I noticed a couple of pollies trying to find a way to. Well, it worked for Donald, so therefore. They don't Short, understand. Shorten and Trump, there's two words that shouldn't be in the same sentence. But no, correct. But there's a thing, but don't you love all of these politicians pretending, oh, well, yeah. I've got to take on a little bit of this because that seems to be yeah, the mood yeah, of the yeah, moment. Yeah. But oh, I don't know. I don't, Shorten does convince me. Every time I listen to him now, every time I hear him, he sounds like a man who's in pain. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's, he's an octave, octave higher and sort of like, you know, he's, he's on the edge of the ledge and he doesn't want to jump off. Well, I, I mean, it's, it's, but, uh, I don't know. What's his, what is his view? What is he going to do? You know, we, 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 I want to build dams, I want to take the money away from dams. They never built the inland rail. They, when we try to decentralise, move things out to country areas, they knock it and say they're going to uh, not do it. There's nothing tactile about Shorten. It's all... He's, he's been having too many cups of coffee with the other people down in Canberra. Got mm. to get out. And just finally, it's this thing where there are, what, it's about 15% of people we know that are anything but major at the moment, major yep. parties. Yep. What's, what's your pitch to them about Mine. stick with us? Well, you know, I just do it my own way. Um, I try to meet people on the street, um, in the supermarket. I tell to my own crowd and the Nats, listen to them, listen to them, bring that stuff back, bring that stuff back to Canberra. Uh, put it through the filter of a party mechanism, if, you know, that's, that's important, but um, stay humble, Stay on the street, uh, and it, it's really—it's not a complicated science. Mm. It's just—it's just really pretty basic. And um, if you do that, you'd be pretty right. I, I mean, I'm—I'm very—I'm uh, humble. I have to use the word again: flattered, humble. The strongest vote for the coalition at the last election was in this electorate. You know, you got—we got vote. We got one booth now, and Doc. We got 97% of the primary vote. Wow! Wow! That's awesome. I'm looking for those other two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is it? Because yeah. everyone says they voted. Yeah, yeah, correct. I think it was a chance, right? Last one here. You're the father of four daughters. Yeah. I've got a little two-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. Any advice for bringing up girls? No, work hard because it's going to cost you a lot of money. <laughs> no, they, they, they love you to death. They, they, but girls are psychologically work you out. You don't have to worry about politicians. They've got it all worked out. They, they, and they... they Co they work them, they get in a group, they have a little discussion about you before you get home, and then they're ready for you to walk in the door. They say, point of attack will be his tie. <laughs> point of attack will be what's happening tomorrow. And so, um, but... Uh, well, just give in. Just give in, mate. Just give in. Go for a walk. Because it's good for the cuddles. Go for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> Barnaby, thank you so much, mate. Happy Australia Day. Yeah, happy Australia Day. Good on you, mate. Thank See you. you. What a privilege to be able to talk to the Deputy Prime Minister at his place, which is an incredible part of uh, Tamworth. Uh, all the best to him, uh, his four daughters and his beautiful wife, Natalie, who were very kind to us all today when we were there.